what have you found is the strategy, not only from your perspective as a therapist, but what do parents have to do to help their children break free from that addiction as well, from that abuse? Well, the first thing I think is just to have a basic understanding of the neuroscience behind substance abuse. And I put a chapter in my book that, that, that explains um, how dopamine works in, in the brain. And, and the real important message for parents is the fact that their child's brain is in the process of developing. Our brains don't get developed fully until we're around age 24 or 25. So it's really important that parents understand that their child's brain is in the process of maturing and developing and forming those critical connections that that child will need in adult. Rick, I got to challenge you there, though. I'm 26, and my wife, st- my wife tells me that my brain is far from developed. So well, you might be a little bit delayed, Andrew. You, you, you might must... be, she might be right because she's observing certain behaviors. Yes. Oh, she she, she so. most certainly is. <laughs> Sorry. So you, you you might be a little bit behind the curve here. <laughs> Probably. You, you may need until may, to maybe a few more years. I think I do. I think she'll, <laughs> she'll let you she'll let you know when she thinks your brain is matured. No. <laughs> but but I think but I think it's important that 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 parents understand that these substances uh, can interact within a, a developing brain and, and, and really cause some, some difficulties that are not observable. Um, and, and the example I would give you is that these kids that I worked with that were smoking a lot of marijuana, these were all very bright kids. Their IQs were average to above average to superior. They were very bright kids. But they were... Really? But they were... Yeah, but, but they were smoking a lot of marijuana. But when the psychological reports came back, the psychological testing came back, what I noticed was the processing speed of their brain was below average. Their short-term memory was impaired and their motivation was below average. Now, these are things that are not maybe readily observable, but it might explain why the child is struggling in school because their short-term memory isn't as sharp as they want it to be. And the processing speed of their brain, the, the brain's just not clicking along the way it should be. These are some of the effects that marijuana has on, on, on a developing brain. So parents just need to know that it's important that they do everything they can to protect that child's brain. Can I ask, is that, is that a cause or is that an effect? Is that the chicken or the egg there? Do we do we know that's an effect that's the effect that's the effect okay. that's the of, effect of putting okay. a sub of putting a substance into a developing brain that shouldn't be just curious just because I, I hear that and I think well I mean just because I like to play devil's advocate and think about all the angles like what if just really smart kids who are just a little bit less motivated than most are more um, what would be the right word susceptible to substance abuse? Just curious, but no, it's it's an effect. Okay. Well, the question always comes in, you know, why do some people become addicted to a substance and other people don't? Um, and, and and we draw the distinction because addiction is not really a diagnosis. It's a spectrum. Anymore. It's it's well, it's a spectrum of substance abuse disorder that can be mild, moderate, or severe. Well, severe is more likely to be what addiction used to be called. But why do some people get captured by substances and others don't? Well, research shows that 40 to 60 percent of a person's vulnerability is purely genetics. And that's true of any disease. If you have hypertension in your family, what does it mean? You're more at risk for hypertension. If you're, if you're a woman and you have breast cancer in your family, what does it mean? It means you're more at risk. Doesn't mean you're going to get the disease, just means you're more at risk. The same is true for addiction. If you have addiction in your family, in your history, you're more at risk. So 40 to 60 percent is genetics. What's the remaining percentage? The remaining percentage is environmental is, is, is environmental factors. 